Thank you, Phil. I'll just share my screen. Okay, I'm back on full screen on Teams. Um, I just want to make sure to describe team-based learning and that this is not something that I've created. I read a book called Getting Started with Team-Based Learning by Jim Sibley, and I made the choice to switch over from a traditional format of teaching to using team-based learning from last semester to this semester. I had very little time to read this book between semesters, but I'm very happy I did because I feel like it fits quite well with the use of ChatGPT within the classroom. I'm going to be very uh, short on my description of this. It's actually quite an involved way of teaching. And the very first thing that I would do is I give my students a week to go through the content and I meet with them once a week. And when they go through the reading that I've assigned or other kinds of media they might go through to get the core concepts, what we would like to cover when we get together in class, then the first thing that they do is an individual quiz that has about eight to ten multiple choice questions and they're looking to select the most correct answer out of four potential answers per question and they've got about 20 minutes at the beginning of the class to go through this and then when they're finished with the individual quiz they move on to do the exact same quiz over again but they do it with about five to seven to six other students. So they work in groups. And then instead of just selecting the correct answer, they have discussion with each other where they would rank what they think is the most correct answer. And they could still potentially earn some part marks if they rank what is the correct answer still quite high. So it's facilitating more discussion on the core concepts that I'm trying to get them to focus on in the class. It's not that I'm testing them, but I'm trying to get them ready so that they can continue to learn together in the activity as they work in their groups for the remainder and the majority of the rest of the time in class. So depending on how the groups do in their answers, I can mark it very quickly. I'm lucky to have fairly small class sizes, so I can mark it right there. And then the majority of what was incorrect, I only focus on lecturing on this, so that way I'm not wasting any of their time. If they already know it, I don't need to talk about it. Then the rest of the time, roughly about two hours, we've got multiple different kinds of activities that they could work on. Because I teach mostly programming, um, the majority of the time is spent getting them the practice on programming. And I allow them to use ChatGPT with this, and we've heard from others already. I'm not going to repeat, you know, the great things that they're saying about uh, getting students ready for industry, which I agree with. Um, and I found that it's really helpful to facilitate with learning if they go to use some service like ChatGPT to just focus on a very small kind of generated output so that it, they can focus on getting just the next little step that they might understand to move forward in their learning. So it's a bit overwhelming if you ask it to generate a whole bunch for you to really get out of it what would help you. All right, I also have other uses um, and I'm very happy with the newest, one of the newest models that's the cheapest to use and it's allowing me to explore programmatically what we can do with it. So this is an addition to team based learning. I'm not getting students to program this, but I'm saying that if you're not a programmer and you and I would recommend everybody to try to get into programming, because if you can use services like this, hook into them with your program it's so much more powerful. And one of the simplest programming languages that you might want to do this with would be Python maybe a few dozen lines of code and uh, if i'm looking at the output and i want to scrutinize it i'm starting to write really small prototype programs so i can go through and maybe direct it at documents and then try to double check the generated output based off of the content of those documents using open source software that's available from meta or some of you might remember as facebook this is a great tool because it can help me chunk pieces out of documents for me 
and bring in this context for focus with chat GPT. And then with the response that comes back, I could maybe look up programmatically the synonyms out of the documents that might match, and I could try to you know, immediately get at exactly where it's trying to point me to. And so it can help speed up things like research. And I think we could use it for helping students get into research, make research more, more open and accessible. Um, so I've got Michelle with me. She's been a great support. Um, she's going to list off a few other potential use cases. And I realize that a lot of this is still advancing quite quickly. So if I could please ask if we could share Michelle's microphone. Hi, Michelle, you should be able to unmute your mic. OK, hi, everyone. I'm here facilitating from Canada as well, from uh, Chilquayak, the home of the Halkamalem speaking Stalo people, people of the river. I feel so excited because uh, the other day when um, when Russell was in uh, a session with me, we were talking about um, the scholarship of teaching and learning and Russell made a great, great comment. He said, uh, what would happen if instead of the students coming to us as educators, if we went to them? And that really hit me. And I thought about, and, and we, we joined forces with a couple of other colleagues, and we thought about how this, um, how we could leverage this technology to um, customize sort of multiple descriptions of tailor to in, tailored to individual students, like an individual education plan or an individual tutor for a particular student. Um, just using the very simple technology that um, Russell is introducing here, uh, but leveraging the greater, larger um, system of chat GPT. And then we, we started to get really crazy and we were talking about collaborations with the, between the art department and the English department and possibly the education or teaching and learning department where you could create stories um, and text adventures. Uh, uh, you know, the CIS students helping the creative arts students write their, to make their stories into an interactive adventure. And then we also talked about um, really supporting research because think of the possibilities if this can scan and look up synonyms for a word that you're looking for. Um, in the literature and that vast knowledge uh, amount of literature that's out there, if you want to um, find a specific uh, context or concept in the literature. So really a great supportive research tool as well. A Thanks, among you. many other <laughs> ideas that we generated just last night as well. Thank you, Michelle. I mean, it's really exciting to think about. But, um, I realize that there's new version of ChatGPT version 4. And there's going to be even more choice for different kind of large language models. So I believe if we have this kind of choice, it will be very beneficial. We would not only want to be beholden to one kind of company, right? Um, so some of the things that I've been using this for um, in my development while I've just experimented, I find that it's really good for summarizing the documents I'm interested in. It makes it a lot faster rather than just going to ChatGPT service. Um, so I can speed things up quite quickly there, helping me write multiple choice questions. Of course, I have to do a little bit of editing afterwards. You definitely want to scrutinize the output, make sure it matches with the content. Um, and then again, I, I think it's really interesting to consider the instructions for an assignment. Um, and we tried looking at, uh, Michelle was generous enough to share one of the assignment instructions that she has for a course that she's teaching. And we look at asking, what is the next thing that I should do in the assignment? And it can answer for you. Um, and we tried to test that as, as far as we could, but I won't get into a lot of detail because I realize we don't have a lot of time. But just everybody I talk to has some kind of amazing different idea that they might use something like this for. Um, so very few lines of programming. Um, I've got a quick demo video, and I think the next thing I would do is share that. And if I go out of full screen with my presentation slides and switch to it, I'm not sure if you'll hear the sound for this. I'm not going to bother trying to pick away at figuring out whether I can get the sound to work or not. So I can cross my fingers, hope that you'll hear this.
OK, if you can't hear this, um, I'm just using my system. It's on the command line. Again, it's very early stage. I'm asking it a question about a document where I just have the one page, so it's a smaller document. Le around the largest documents that I found that this is useful for so far is around 2,000 to 3,000 words. And then when you see the generated output, it's just going into a document that I've written myself. So I also want to think about copyright. And I'm just hearing the, my own video right there, so sorry. I'm a bit stilted. Um, this document that I did it on was my teaching philosophy. Um, so I know the output that it generated, it's correct. And what I would definitely want to approach asking questions to a set of documents like this using ChatGPT to scrutinize the output much more heavily if I'm not aware of what the contents of the documents are. OK, I think that about sums up uh, so far. I wanted to end a little bit early because I have one more slide to share. and I wouldn't um, want to cut into the final thing I would like to share with you before we can have a couple questions. We've actually got about two minutes left um, now, Russell, so I'm not sure if you kind of wanted to jump to your next bit now and then we can do the Q&A in the chat afterwards, maybe. Um, that actually sounds really good. I, I want to end with something I think is potentially very inspiring for everyone. And I would want people to think very thoroughly about this so powerful technology. So my last thing that I would like to share is actually going back in history. And I have this amazing um, old nugget that I want you to, to hear. So we've got Lewis Carroll. Most people that know this name know it from Alice in Wonderland. So a fantasy story. But the real name of the author was Charles Dodgson, and he actually taught mathematics at Oxford. Now he vacationed in the summer at Sandown very often, and he met this person by the name of Miss Gertrude Chataway when she was very young. And they he had many friendships like this. And it's just so inspiring what she has to say about her experience with him after he had passed away. So just keep in mind the context of the quote I'm going to give you from Miss Chataway. She says, I had the usual child's love for fairy tales and marvels, and his power of telling stories naturally fascinated me. We used to sit for hours on the wooden steps which led from our garden on the beach whilst he told the most lovely tales that could possibly be imagined, often illustrating exciting situations with a pencil as he went along. One thing that made his stories particularly charming to a child was that he often took his cue from her remarks. A question would set him off on quite a new trail of ideas so that one felt that one had somehow helped to make the story. And it seemed a personal possession. It was the most lovely nonsense conceivable and I naturally reveled in it. His vivid imagination would fly from one subject to another and was never tied down in any way by the probabilities of life. And I just want to point out to everybody with the technology ChatGPT, it's generating that next most likely probable word. But I, and, and it's very exciting. And I know that some people, they might get a little bit afraid, like what kind of jobs are going to be replaced in the future like this? Um, but I would just remind you, we would want to focus, like Miss Chataway says, on the probabilities of life. We can use this technology to connect people. This is our value. So others can build as powerful a system as they might be able to create, but it will never truly have your perspective. We can look back through history and we can look at what is the most valuable to us with a critical eye. I mean, I want to remind everybody that no one can take away your perspective. That's your value, your brain. We want to connect everybody with technology like this. I, I would love to support everybody um, as much as possible and just remind you about this.
Thank you so much, Russell, um, and bang on time. Um, thank you so much. That was another great talk. Um, Russell, we do have a couple of questions in the chat. Um, if you and Michelle could maybe just take a look at your kind of leisure, that would be really helpful. Thank you.